let's return to the issue of Charlotte Makbeke. You have just heard the uh, Gauteng Command Council briefing uh, that was held earlier this afternoon. The provincial government is to immediately reopen blocks one and two of the Charlotte Makbeke Hospital. Now, the facility was partially damaged by fire in April. The entire hospital has been closed for over two months now. Doctors and rights groups have been calling for the facility to reopen open. Its patient load, of course, has been moved to other facilities which are already overburdened. But let's get a response uh, now to the news that the hospital will be reopening. The Premier initially said next week, but he then went on to say immediately for blocks one and two. This is despite uh, the hospital not being fully fire compliant. I'm joined now by Vedant Engelbrecht. He's the CEO of private firefighting company FireOps SA. He and his team helped the city's fire crews put out that blaze that started in the garage of the hospital in April. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Engelbrecht. So the hospital was only partially damaged. Why was the whole hospital closed down? Well, it was evacuated in totality because the smoke traveled from the fire area into uh, the wards and the passages, and that was why the hospital was evacuated in the first place. And that then put the spotlight on the fact that there was no emergency plan, and it reminded everybody that the hospital is not fire safe. And so that's the, that's the, 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 the sequence of it. All right. Okay, so basically the April fire led to that larger inspection that revealed the whole hospital is a bit of a fire hazard. Talk to me about what is wrong with the hospital, and I presume it's not just about fitting stronger fire doors and putting up some more fire extinguishers to solve the problem. So what is the problem in terms of fire compliance? Now, the fire doors is a bit of a smoke screen because it's only a subcomponent. Uh, a, a, a hospital, by definition, is what is known as a life safety building. And life safety buildings are subject to rational fire designs, which need to be conducted or compiled by fire engineers, and it has to be taken to the fire, uh, the, the rational design committee of the city council. And then the uh, after that has been approved, and that is a long road, it's not an easy one, uh, then the building uh, control uh, officer may grant uh, the permission that uh, the, the, the building may be occupied again. But an, an occupancy certificate has then to be issued, and these things cannot be issued partially. So you can't have partial uh, compliance of a building, especially mm. not a life safety. Okay, so talk to me about what is wrong with the hospital. Uh, why is it not fire? I understand the process that has to be gone through to, to get that going, but in terms of whether it's structurally, what are the problems, the way it's designed, uh, tell me about the problems with the hospital that make it, in your view, not compliant. Well, you know that the building is, is a, it's, it's a mammoth building. It's a complex in its own. Uh, in its own right. And um, so smoke travel and fire travel and fire flow path management, is, uh, these are, are serious uh, terms uh, that have to be considered when one plans uh, for fire safety in a, in a building like this. And the building is uh, at the moment still open in the vert vertical shafts. So a fire starting on a lower level will easily travel through the vertical shafts into the upper stories, upper levels. And it will easily travel horizontally because the fire will, of course, create its own drafts and the smoke control doors and fire doors have been removed. And there are literally hundreds of these things in the hospital. And so uh, the other thing that it, that it happened in the meantime is the, the, the fact that the water situation in the city has worsened. If the hospital is being donated drinking water by, uh, by the uh, uh, that, that, social support, that, the social support so, groups, where no, will firefighting water no, come from? Yeah, look, the, the issue, just, just, just to jump in there, the water issue, to my understanding, uh, actually hit Rahima Musa and Helen Joseph um, 
but I, I actually want to pick up on what you say about the vertical shafts. Are you talking about the lift shafts that would send fire traveling vertically? Uh, just explain that in simple terms for me. Lift, lift shafts also because those lifts are not fire sealed. But then you also have vertical shafts where pipe work and cables and all that run through vertically through the building. And those are not fire stopped. So what so is... You've, you've, so you've got one hollow building. That's what you really have is one big shell instead of compartmentalized floors. What is your response to the news today from the Premier that blocks one and two are going to be immediately reopened. Now, I know you know which blocks those are. Uh, do you think uh, that it's safe to occupy from a fire safety point of view? No, they're not safe. It's the, the, the decision borders on the criminal. It's, it's not safe. And I understand that they, they're weighing it uh, possible loss in COVID uh, as opposed to uh, what is considered as in, an improbability now that another, one fire has happened, that maybe another won't happen. But it is, it's not, that's not how these things work. Um, the building needs to be safe before the people move back, and, and I'll stand by that. Whilst the, while the building is vacant, and then now is the best time to correct these issues, there have been reports done by fire engineers and consultants in the turn of the century already. And uh, if, uh, I mean, last week or earlier in the week, we heard that the plans have even disappeared. If you had, don't have building plans, then there's no way mm. that you can have a rational so, time. So I just want to update the council. I, and yeah, then, there was a, sorry to jump in. There was an interesting article, I think, written by Carol Payton of Business Day. Uh, only partial mm. plans were found. Uh, the rest have apparently been redrawn. And some of the mm. fire doors, and I'm presuming these are fire doors for blocks one and two, have now been donated and installed. With that knowledge, are you still standing by your concern that it's not safe to be going back into that hospital? Yes, uh, you, uh, we need to listen to the terminology being used and the language being used, uh, Sally. You know, everything that we say is partially, partially. You can't even sign off partially just because the fire doors have been installed. A building is considered in its totality and holistically. And there are several specialities and specialties that have to come together before such a certificate can be issued. And uh, if the certificate hasn't been issued, then it means that the building hasn't been granted occupancy status. And if it hasn't been granted occupancy status, the minister doesn't have the authority to override that. It's not the minister's mandate to do that. The mandate lies with the building control officer of Johannesburg. What do you say to the doctors who are out on the streets today saying we need to get this facility reopened? Uh, we are desperate. Uh, we are in the midst of a terrible, terrible crisis. What do you say to them? If I ask the same doctors how they will evacuate that hospital again tonight without, for instance, smoke detection being in the building and a public address system that also needs to be in the building, the same doctors won't know how to evacuate the building the same way as they didn't know how to do it in the first instance. And so two wrongs don't make a right. And that's, I mean, that's a very basic principle. Yes, indeed, and thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this evening, bringing to our attention a very important issue that was Vainant Engelbrecht. He says there's no way it's safe to move back into that hospital. And